Okay, let's go ahead and go into the example project for uh, MIDI to OSC control. This example is an example that comes with the Runtime Editor 3, and it's for controlling the uh, Plog Bajul layouts for loading a layout with incoming program change. So it's MIDI incoming and sending out an OSC command to a uh, either a local version of Bajul, I'm sorry, uh, yes, of Bajul, or over a network. I'll show you how that works uh, towards the end of this demonstration. Right now, I'm going to show you how to uh, to set things up. And in this project, you can change all of these objects. You can move them around. You can change their look. You can do whatever you want, change the script. This is all for demonstration. You don't have to do it this way either. But what I'm going to show you is how you get your devices. This is the principle of the thing, is you have to get your device name. Once you get your device name, you can actually just use this string in your connection string. And uh, the main connection uh, loop, the listening loop, is in this listen button. I'll show you that. So right now I did uh, a get devices, and this pulls, uh, pulls all of our input and output devices. So you have to make sure you're selecting an input for listening. We're going to get all of the data coming in. And for my system, it's on my uh, profile light bridge. I also have a button here for convenience to get all of the project file names from your installation folder. And I have a button that just uh, pulls all of that data in and throws it into this field. Now, if you have to change your, uh, what I did is a, a right click and I'm going into the release script. If you need to change your the path, you can go into the script and you change this string within the double quotes and then save that script and it will it will load from that location. Now what we can do, we have our device selected, our files loaded, and we can start listening. And if everything is set up correctly, the button will highlight green and you'll get uh, ready in the RX data. In this field, it will show incoming. I'll press some uh, some note on and off buttons. And I also have a convenience button here for opening uh, Bajul. This is uh, is actually a, uh, a shell command. It does a, a, a launch of Bajul. And if this path is different, you go into the release script here and you can change this path. For Windows, we need, uh, we need the escape. We need double, uh, double backspace characters because Java uses uh, backspace as an escape character. So that's why that's there. Uh, but let's go ahead and open Bajul. And I have Bajul already set up for listening on port 3210. You set your uh, either the IP address or the name. Right now I'm just using this as a local demonstration. And your port in this field because it pulls the information, the connection information from this field here. And we're ready to uh, start communicating. You can do you can open a file by test in this field here. I'm actually utilizing this field and the script in this button. So you can do some testing without doing any MIDI by just uh, putting a file name here. And we opened uh, a different file in the background with Bajul. And actually, uh, let's go ahead and, and just send in some program changes. And I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, let's go into the window mode, though, so you can see more what's going on in the background here. And I'll send some program changes now. So as you can see, Bajul is loading is loading files, uh, layouts in the background as I'm sending program changes. The program change numbers are coming in here. And it's actually using this number to select uh, an adjacent number in this list. So that's how this logic works. It doesn't have to work this way, but that's how the script and the listen, the listen button here is, is working. So now that I've shown that... Uh, how this works. I'll show in more detail what is going on to make this work. And I'll just press the window button again to go back into the editor mode. And we'll stop listening right now. I'll go into the script. There are, there are actually commands. This is an event-driven uh, runtime editor, IDE. And the scripts 
are based on the events push release repeat so what we have in the uh, the loop button is not only the in a script in the loop but we have scripts in the push release to set things up so when a user pushes on the button it will actually set up things like global so I'll show you in the push script it's just setting it's clearing a few globals and setting the layouts global with all of the the file names in the script but let's go to the um, the release script also has a few things let's open this up a little bit more and we are we're initializing MIDI and we're getting the MIDI device name and getting an object reference so that we can do some uh, some custom things setting setting the color of the listen button is what this is doing and then it's starting the loop so when the the user releases the button the loop is started with a 500 millisecond delay and let's go in and look at that loop the loop is simply getting it's getting the MIDI buffer and setting the uh, RX data field and parsing the buffer so the buffer is uh, the MIDI data buffer is thrown to a variable called variable called buff buf and then all of the the splitting and parsing is is going on to determine what what the program number is that's what all of this is and once once it determines what that number is this is where all of the custom stuff happens it sets uh, it sets the field to show you what's going on and this is actually pressing the open file button here so it's utilizing existing code to open the file so rather than sending an OSC command here it's first setting the field this field with the string name and then it's pressing it's doing a do release it's triggering the release script in this open file button this is just one way to do this so it's already utilizing scripting that's here and you can copy these buttons to your own project and all of this scripting goes with it so uh, there is a way to kind of utilize all of this stuff that's happening now and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you again how this is working so let, let's go into the listen mode again and watch watch the uh, uh, the file name what it will do is as a program change comes in the file name will change and then it actually does it presses it uh, sends a release command do release and this is where the send OSC command comes into play it will pull in that field that file name and what gets the uh, the OS you know where what is the socket that we're going to send to and then it sets up the type of command the OSC command so it's an open command uh, string type and then it gets the field with the string name so let's go ahead and, and watch this field as it changes and so that's how this example is working what you can do is you can simply if you know the names rather than going through all of this if you just want to send OSC commands you can just send this is all you have to do send OSC and if you know your uh, your socket you just put that in right here and then uh, your command is uh, is open string and then the, the file name this is a delay parameter and there is some help online help so if I typed in send and dot uh, we do get some online help and uh, it automatically fills in some parameters for you to to show you what what the parameters are there's also some uh, there's a file for help too you can also open the uh, documentation that's online and that will uh, that can take you through some of so, some of the uh, information that you need in order to get this to work but that's just that's just an example of how you can do uh, MIDI to OSC and OSC commands in general there's also an example of a MIDI script uh, MIDI project for for sending and receiving MIDI commands in general for doing any type of uh, 
MIDI.